from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis pleaded with residents to ignore misinformation during a national address last night and to recognize that the COVID-19 vaccine is the only way out of a pandemic that continues to disrupt societies around the world. He also announced measures to boost the country's ability to bear the latest surge of COVID-19 cases. Although many residents anticipated that he would announce new restrictions to curb the spread of the virus, Dr. Minnis announced none. He instead made it clear that letting commerce and daily life continue is one of his priorities. His address came as 130 cases of COVID-19 were confirmed on Tuesday, while 100 people remain hospitalized, including 10 in the intensive care unit. Police in New Providence are investigating a drowning incident which occurred in the Eastern District. It has left a one-year-old child dead. According to reports, shortly after 7 p.m. yesterday, the child was at home with relatives when the child wandered from the house and a few minutes later was discovered at the bottom of a swimming pool. That child was transported to hospital in serious condition but was later pronounced dead. Investigations are continuing. A significant number of Bahamas Power and Light employees called in sick yesterday, prompting executives to assure customers that supply would continue uninterrupted. While it was unclear how many workers were absent, Bahamas Electrical Workers Union President Kyle Wilson said it was possible that around 60 percent of the employees did not show up for work. However, executive sources at BPL said about 50 people were ill. Despite this, during a press conference yesterday, BPL CEO Whitney Hasty was adamant that customers could expect supply to continue as usual. Scores of social services employees demonstrated across the country in a show of frustration yesterday, citing unfair practices, poor working conditions, and unresolved workplace grievances. The demonstrations, which began around midday, prompted the closure of offices in New Providence, Grand Bahama, Abaco, Exuma, and other family islands. All social workers protested on their lunch break yesterday, the Tribune was told, and the group plans to write to Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis with their demands, to which they have given him, they said, seven days to respond. In widely circulated videos, protesters on various islands could be seen holding placards, which read overworked and underpaid, while chanting promotion, overdue, and unfair treatment. A similar exercise was also seen in New Providence, featuring dozens of workers demonstrating outside the department's headquarters on Blue Hill Road. According to social workers, their frustrations stem from years of neglect and disrespect. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, fueled by vaccinations and government aid, the U.S. economy grew at a solid 6.5% annual rate last quarter, in another sign that the nation has achieved a sustained recovery from the pandemic recession. The total size of the economy has now surpassed its pre-pandemic level. Thursday's report from the Commerce Department estimated that the nation's gross domestic product, its total output of goods and services, accelerated in the April to June quarter from an already robust 6.3% annual growth rate in the first quarter of the year. The quarterly figure was, however, less than analysts had expected. Israel's Prime Minister today announced the country would offer a coronavirus booster to people over 60 who have already been vaccinated. The announcement by Naftali Bennett makes Israel the first country to offer a third dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine to its citizens on a wide scale. The decision comes at a time of rising infections and signs the vaccine's efficacy dwindles over time. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure remains the dominant weather feature across the area. Mariners and residents should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity. There is the risk of rip currents along the eastern and southern shorelines in the central and southeast Bahamas. Residents are urged to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activities as heat indices are expected to reach triple digits. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny, hot, and humid, with a few isolated showers and thunder thunderstorms mainly in the northwest Bahamas, a bit breezy in the central and southeast Bahamas, mainly fair and warm tonight with a few stray showers. A small craft's caution is in effect for the central and southeast Bahamas. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest Bahamas, but falling light and variable at times. East to southeast at 15 to 20 knots over open waters in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest Bahamas. 
Bahamas, four to six feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. We will have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 75. Today's heat index is 104. The sun will set this afternoon at 754 and will rise tomorrow morning at 637. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.